I'm Saskia Sassen from Columbia University. I'm here at the symposium on decoding Asian urbanism. Um, the global city. When I first started to work on something that had to do with a new role of cities in an increasingly globalized and partly digitized operational space for firms, but also for museums and for, you know, a variety of, let's say, corporate actors, some good ones and some not so savory ones. The, the notion was that intermediation became an extraordinarily significant event. Before, before we globalized the way we globalized, there were international agreements, there was international trade, there was a lot of that. But basically the powerful corporations operated inside their firms. So if they needed something, they hired full-time staff. Out of that, by the way, as a footnote, comes the possibility for upward mobility. You can start low in a corporation and you had all this ladder. Huh? When a firm globalizes and is going to be operating in 25 countries, it actually needs specialized knowledge about you know, Mongolia, Argentina, whatever the 25 countries. At that point, they cannot hire full-time staff. They may just need five hours of top level corporate Mongolian accounting you know, and multiply that 17 times, 25 times, 78 times. What happens at that point is an intermediate complex operational space emerges where these firms can go and buy that stuff rather than hiring full time. And none of the firms that constitute this center with finance, you know, very innovative lawyering, very innovative accounting, none of those firms um, has the full product because that, that firm that wants to go global will need a lot. So what you have is a exp rapidly expanding world of intermediaries. These intermediaries with finance, the queen of them all, they cannot lose. So they would merge firms. Remember the mergers and acquisitions? They would merge firms. The two firms that were merged, often big corporations, would often go broke. But that intermediate sector, the lawyers, the accountants, the financiers, etc., etc., they had made their money. So you have an intermediation function that expands and that needs to be in cities because it's highly networked knowledge. And it becomes very rich and very powerful. Now, as globalization, this new global era expands and it moves to Buenos Aires, to Istanbul, to the Chinese cities, to et cetera, et cetera, you have a replication of this intermediation function in these places. Maybe not as grand as it was in New York, in London, in Hong Kong, in Tokyo, you know, in Paris, the major leading centers, but it really spreads. Because those global firms, and they may have been from diverse nationalities, including today prominently Chinese, they will go to Buenos Aires, use Buenos Aires as a platform to extract all the knowledges that they need to put together in order to then go buy land to grow soy or whatever they might be doing. So this is a deeply economic function, but the global city also has all kinds of other functions. So I like to say, activists for the environment, say the, the, the rainforest. So activists for the rainforest, the centers for activism are Tokyo, Oslo, New York. The rainforests are very far away from there, but those places become the places where you engage, you know, the enemy or the corporation that you want to, etc. And you can repeat that example. So one issue that comes out of this is an extraordinary specialized differentiation among global cities. Many people ask me, how come there wasn't just one Uber? global city, a super global city that emerged. Let's look at Europe, especially the European Union, etc. Why do they have three major financial centers when they could have one? So Milano and some other smaller ones lost functions, but London, Paris and Frankfurt gained function. Still, you have, you have financial centers, you know, in, in each European country has one of them. But the really core articulators, those that have global city functions, are those three. And when you look at those three, one reason that they exist is that they're radically different. 
Paris is a radically different global city function from what Frankfurt is, from what London is. So again, this differentiation. If there is one aspect of my analysis that got completely lost in the discussion, it is that highly specialized differentiation. And that has been a source of enormous irritation for me. Because the notion was, and this is sort of a second major